Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. In this video we're going to be talking about what a C13 wormhole is, because I think there's a bit of confusion about this with newer players. It's certainly one of the more unusual. You say to someone that the, challenge, the, the, the class of a system, C1 through C6, is kind of like its difficulty rating, and that you know you're going to need fleets of capitals for C6s, then you tell them there's one called a C13, you watch what their brain does at that point. They're like, if a C6 requires capitals, what the hell does a C13 require? And then you stop and explain, destroyers. Yeah, C-13s are one of my favourite classes of wormhole for the simple fact that they allow me to fly some of my favourite ships, the small ships like frigates and destroyers. Now the ship you see on screen here is the Minmata Republic Tech 3 Tactical Destroyer, the Swipple or Spipel or Sweeple or however the hell you want to pronounce that, I don't really give a damn anymore. This is one of my favourite of the T-3 destroyers because I love how you saw it folding out earlier and you saw it nice and flat from its uh, propulsion mode. The visuals on this are just absolutely fantastic, whereas like the head Hecate, the Confessor, and the Jackdaw, they're a lot more muted in what they do going between modes. But anyway, 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 besides the point, C-13s. C-13s are special wormhole systems that we're going to talk about today that allow you to use destroyers like this to make the same isk as a Bloomin' Cruiser. If you find this video useful or helpful, if you learn anything, please let me know. Hit like, drop a comment in the description, subscribe if you haven't already, jump onto my Discord, I'm doing giveaways on there frequently, and if you are a new player to EVE Online, I can get you 1 million free skill points just by clicking the referral link in my description down below. Give you a nice big head start in the game. Cat Skull, our corporation, is is also always recruiting and if you want to go the extra mile to help support this channel you can do so by following me on Patreon, you can pledge to support there, I have a PayPal tip jar and a Redbubble merchandise store, all ways to help keep this channel running and keep content like this coming and thank you to everyone who does support, it does mean the world to me. Anyway, all of the preamble out of the way, let's jump into talking about C13 wormholes and what makes these darn things so special. So the first question that we need to address then is what actually is a C-13 system? And well, in short, a C-13 system is a system that is connected only by small wormholes, so only frigates, destroyers, and most cruisers can enter. It is a shattered wormhole, so it does have ice in it, and those sites can be absolutely fantastic. And it always has a wolf Rye system effect, all the way up at C-6 system effect. The other content in there tends to be around C3 level as well, so you're looking at things like solar cells and fortification frontier strongholds as your combat anomalies. But it's a C3 system that only allows small ships with the C6 Wolf Rye effect. Now, what do I mean by the C6 Wolf Rye effect? Well, for this I've opened up my wormhole PDF guide. This is something I've been working on quite a lot recently. It's a PDF that is essentially trying to collate every single guide about JSpace into one location. It's still very much a work in progress, but it is available to freely download on the Cat's Gold Discord, linked in the description down below. And if you are a seasoned wormholer watching this, for instance, I would love to know your thoughts and opinions on this guide, and if you're a newbie to wormholes, I would love to know if there's something that's not clear in the guide, or if there's things that you think should be added or explained better, that kind of thing there. But anyway, I've done a page here on JSpace systems. So certain JSpace systems have effects that change the nature of your ship statistics and modules. These system effects only apply to capture layer ships, sleepers and structures in the system are not affected. Now there are six different types, um, there's Pulsar, Black Hole, Cataclysmic Variable, Magnetar, Red Giant and Wolf Rye. And all of these are based on real world science and I've done a video talking about just these which I'll link in the description down below as well for those of you interested in learning more about the different system effects in JSpace. The one we're focusing on today though is the Wolf Rye. Now remember, in a C13 it's C3 content but with the C6 Wolf Rye buff. So that means we get a 100% increase to armor HP. Any ship in there has its armor hit points doubled. Plus 100% means doubled. This does come at the expense of your shield resistances being halved. So if you're using a shield tank, your shield resistances are much lower, you're going to be taking a lot more damage. Wolf Rye's are absolutely the playground of armor ships. 
Then we have the small weapon damage buff, which is monstrous, plus 200%. It's plus 200%, which means we are actually tripling the DPS that we're going to be doing. If you take in a ship that is using small weapons into a Wolf Ray AC6 or a C13, because it uses the same C6 effect, you are tripling your weapons DPS. A 200 DPS ship is going to become a 600 DPS ship. That is monstrous. Now, what this means with small weapons is anything that is a small energy turret, small hybrid turret, small projectile turret, small Vorton projector, small entropic disintegrators, um, rockets and light missiles. Now, I do specify rockets and light missiles because this actually means that a cruiser using rapid light missile launches, for example, does get that benefit. It does affect rapid light missile launches, meaning if you had some kind of cruiser in one of these systems in AC-13 that's using rapid light missile launches, it is going to triple its DPS, and that can be terrifying. Worth considering, worth looking at and thinking about. The final effect from a Wolf Ray AC6 or C13 is a negative 50% to your signature radius, which is a good thing. It means your signature radius is half of what it normally would be, which means you, it takes longer for people to lock onto you. It means that you are harder to hit and missiles apply their damage less effectively to you. It just means you are harder to hit, more survivable, and if you're armor tanking as well, having half a signature radius and a full doubling of your armor HP makes you actually surprisingly resilient and on that small weapon damage and things around you are dying just really really quickly. Now because a C13 is essentially a C3 system with C6 effects, it means we're going to be seeing things like solar cells and fortification frontier strongholds and stuff like that that normally you would take a tech 3 cruiser through, but because of the C6 bonuses, the Wolf Raya bonuses of the C13, you are actually able to run those sites surviving and doing them in good time using frigates and destroyers. Like genuinely, I'm going to showcase in a moment the Svipple that I've shown in a previous video running C2s, running one of these C uh, C13s very, very quickly. I've done it in Confessors, I've even done it in a Wolf. Now the Wolf's a little bit slower, but it is an armor tank ship that is using small weapons, and it does remarkably well in a C13. Remember, it is only small ships that can enter, so frigates, destroyers, and certain cruisers, most cruisers, admittedly, um, so you do need to bear that in mind. They are also quite popular with PvPers, so do keep an eye on things. You'll actually see in the combat demonstration I'm about to show that partway through running one of the sites, I did get jumped, and I'm going to show you how to handle that if you're an absolute idiot and forgot to set up safes and bookmarks, because goodness me, it was a butthole-clenching incident. I was on voice chat at the time, just slightly panicking about everything. Hopefully you'll find it as entertaining as I did. Anyway, that's what a C-13 is, let's showcase it. So here I am in a Svipple, warping into a Fortification Frontier Stronghold, which you should be familiar with. This is the site that I normally run in a Tech 3 Cruiser, yet here I am in a T3 Destroyer running that same site. Now it's going to be the same thing as usual, warp into the site from your safe point, launch for self your mobile tractor unit, bookmark the mobile tractor unit, I'm actually going to also set up an orbit around it because that kind of makes sense um, when you're using something like this. I do make the stupid mistake of trying to lock on with a drag here and just getting a whole ton of the uh, of the like construct around, nope, just click down the list that way and we're going to start to shoot at things. Um, again, bookmark the MTU. I haven't bookmarked the MTU at this point, and in fact, if you were to be able to see my locations list at the moment, you'll notice I haven't even located the exit. I didn't bookmark the exit on this one either. Um, I just kind of got excited that it was finally a C-13 to run, and so I just kind of warped straight through. The hole had been sort of partially scouted and I ran under the misapprehension of, oh well if it's been scouted then surely that person will have done the exit. No, the person actually only scanned down the other side and bookmarked it. I made the mistakes and it damn near cost me my ship. But otherwise you can see, basically the Svipple, you fly the Svipple the same way you would in my Svipple video where I showcase it running in C2s. And just, yeah, you do that again, but with the C3 sights and the C3 triggers, you'll see I'm taking very little damage and I'm doing massive amounts of damage back. And that's basically because being in a C13, this is a Wolf Raya system with class 6 effects. 200% weapon damage to the small weapons, so my DPS is tripled. 
at this point in time because it's plus 200 percent on top of which i'm also doing the whole thing of i've got my signature radius is currently minus 50 percent so i'm harder to hit harder for missiles to apply to i've got a whole whopping 100 percent additional uh, armor hit points though that has come at the cost of my shield resistances and it's like that's the wonderful thing. This is twice as tanky, it is twice as, three times as damaging, and it's even smaller so it's harder to hit. And it allows me to just kind of run these combat sites that are normally combat sites you'd be flying in something like a Gila, or a Tengu, or even a Rattlesnake. And here I am in a piddly little destroyer, running that same site with the same, possibly even fewer risks it feels like, earning the same amount of loot in the same amount of time. This whole site still takes me about 15 minutes to complete, which is what it takes in my Tengu, or my Loki, or my Gila. But I'm doing it in a ship that is significantly cheaper, and can run away that little bit faster if it needs to. Now, I'm not going to showcase the entire site view. If you've watched my videos on Tech 3 Cruisers, you know how Fortification Frontier Stronghold works. If you've watched my Swipple video, you'll understand how the Swipple works. What I want to showcase is that here I've spotted a Hecate on D-Scan, and I make the stupid decision of going close, grabbing my loot, scooping the cargo hold, and you can see that Hecate's already warped in. He's 30 kilometers away, and those things are bloody fast. Very fast. So I am hoping I can get away from this guy. That is very slow, but he hasn't managed to lock me. I can warp away. I didn't set a safe point either, so I'm just warping to things that he can also warp to. This is a problem, and this is why you have a safe point set up. I'm also kind of panicking here because I don't have the whole thing of, you know, uh, the bookmark on the wormhole, so I don't even know where I can go from there. But immediately on landing into a new site, I'm looking for something else to warp to, and I'm going to go straight for the epicenter. C-13s are shattered wormhole systems, they have an epicenter. And because I'm clicking so bloomin' quickly, I also completely neglect to go in at my usual range of something like 70 or 50 or 30, and I go in at the full 100, which is stupid. And as I'm warping off, there's a Federation Navy Comet now on my tail as well. This is a dangerous fight for me. Yeah, the Spipple does a lot of damage, but those are going to be hard to hit, and the Hecate... God, the Hecate kicks out so much. So I warp in at 100 on the epicenter here, and the second I can, I am uh, cloaking up and moving off to the side. Quickly double tap in space to move away um, and get through. You see the Federation Navy Comet arrives first, and that's warped in at zero, and it's 100 kilometers away, but look at the Hecate! Look at the Hecate, he gets within 4.2 kilometers. Oh, remember if he gets within two and a half, I dropped my cloak, and that's going to be me dead. He is right there next to me, he is closer than five kilometers, and I'm just like, oh doy. This is not good. And I've got a friend, Del in Catskull, who is coming back at this point to scan um, and grab the exit for me. He's going to, you know, bookmark that. But I'm in voice comms with him, and I'm like, look, I've got a Federation Navy comment and a Hecate in here. Maybe hold off on scanning the hole just yet. There it is, right there. So close. He's moving away from me, fortunately. He couldn't see which way I was going. Series of mistakes made there. I did not create a safe point, I did not bookmark the exit. And that nearly bit me in the ass. That is nearly a dead swipple, just because of those mistakes. Now, if I wanted to, I can keep de-scanning and I can look around and, you know, see if these guys disappear and then I can jump back into the site by warping to my MTU. I'm not sure I want to at this point. I kind of got the footage that I needed. I managed to get three sites completed before this. Um, though one of those I dropped off with a confessor. Um, you'll see I've got 68 million in the cargo hold. That is literally from running two, well, one and a half um, sites in this particular C-13. So there's a lot of risk to be made. Just, yeah, bookmark the exit and set up a safe point. Anyway, folks, that's where I'm going to leave it because these guys are still hunting me. I'm going to sit here cloaked for a while. <laughs> that Hecate's adamant that I'm around here somewhere and he's desperate to try and catch me. Um, but essentially, I'm going to sit here cloaked until I'm comfortable that they're out of system. Then I'm going to start warping around and making my way back home safely. And I did get this ship back. You can check Zed Killboard. I got this ship back absolutely fine. Can't say the same for my Golem the other day, but that's just life in wormholes. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Hopefully, you don't make the same mistakes I do. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!